Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Tiano, the last of the Europe, in which we fi finished off ventures in Algeria, but we're playing as everyone's favorite Iberian nation, the Iberian Union. But we did adventures in Algeria. Consider the jewel of the colonial empire by Salazar. Algeria is the latest venture Iberia has found itself partaking in. With the chaos in the French colonies that followed the end of the Second World War, both Italian and Iberian troops rushed in to secure Algeria, though it was clear that both countries wanted the colony for themselves. The French never officially handed authority over to them, as they believed Algeria was an integral part of France as Paris was. However, with the military restrictions imposed on France by the Germans, it was unable to properly claim anything outside of Algiers. Yet, despite not allowing the French to defend their colony, the Germans also continued to reorganize their claims to or recognize their claims to it. With France now a loyal German puppet state, neither Rome nor Madrid dared to claim Algeria as their orders. And so they each began to send sailors into the area of influences both countries had in the region to begin building a proper claim of the territory. The Iberian sailors have begun been neglected for a long time now due to the government having more important matters to attend to, but with Italy on the move, it's time to probably develop and strengthen our area of control in Algeria about the 1962 infrastructure program. With the turn of the year, the time has finally arrived for us to unveil our new infrastructure expansion plans. The beginning will be marked only by minor improvements to create the foundational framework for larger, more comprehensive plans for new economic structure to earn the Union. With the highlight of this year's project being the construction of a new semi-major road outside or in outer or in outer of Madrid, Caudillo Franco has taken a surprising amount of interest in the construction, reportedly. He's been visiting different sites and inspecting work regularly with keen attention. Optimistic union officials seem to have misunderstood a grumble that grip parts of Portuguese coast society the news of the plans. Many regions of the country are in dire need of repair, so financing roadworks hundreds of miles away seems ineffectual at best and neglectful at worst. However, those involved in the project remain daily con confident. That its completion will not have any hindrances due to large security contingents being posted to specifically watch for separatist terrorists. Even more poorly, they recognize the potential the start of this project would, could have for the infrastructure of the whole union, let us hope so, in the struggle for popularity. The unification of the Iberian Peninsula had been a tumultuous if necessary task. In order to prevent a divisive social and political issues from tearing this new country apart, both leaders of the previously separate nations agreed to hold a position of power that shared equal political standing. They became the Cadullos of Iberia, the saviors of a union besieged. However, neither man is entirely satisfied with the current standing and constantly wrestle for power and influence. To do this, they use a sway of interest groups such as regional ethnicities or corporate interests. Hence, the ever-changing political arena of high Iberian politics is a scene to behold, with both Cadillos unwilling to let the other gain the ultimate control of the nation. Interesting. The last Bennett's. Ooh. The cleanup of passages. Because sellers that go to Algeria technically go there because they want to, the government can't openly help them, and, get, and getting to Algeria is already very difficult for most families. Most of them travel through the Moroccan portion of the Sahara without much infrastructure or directions, and many of them never make it to the end, instead being devoured by the sands and the dunes. To counter this, a series of roads will be built and signs will be installed to help the sellers find their way to their new homes. The whole operation will be concealed as a simple expansion of the Moroccan road network in the region to not raise French suspicions and the last bandits. Even though the presence of the bandits in our area of influence in Algeria is much smaller than in Italy's, there's still a couple bands that operate in our territory. Made up of French renegades and local natives, they store rations and guns in from time to time and military, pat military patrols. While not a huge problem, they are annoying nonetheless, uh, thanks to our interests. Uh, or intelligence in the region. Uh, and with the help of the military forces they, there, we've located the headquarters of these pesky bandits. Now they shall face the consequences of their actions and the 1962 colonial budget. As another year begins, one of the first actions of our government has been to apply colonial budget uh, the colonial budget drafted at the end of last year. A tradition of the Iberian administration, the way the government makes sure that the desired effects are seen over the course of the coming year, usually a rather mundane matter, this year's colonial budget has surprisingly received some criticism, with some within the government arguing that the state should first focus on the troubles faced by Iberians, particularly during the period of Christian celebration between Christmas and Easter, but such critics are a minority within the regime, and this year's colonial budget will go ahead as it always does. This year's budget is bigger than usual, with great changes coming to Morocco and the sub-Saharan colonies and a greater involvement in the development of Algeria by the peninsular government and dunes and dune. Sand dunes have a bad habit of burying things, or roads crossing the Moroccan and Algerian desert constantly must be maintained, carefully monitored for any signs of uh, sandfall. Just about the only thing more difficult than maintaining desert roads is laying them down. Pablo and his fellow surveyors lay down steel markers as they fly to the course of a new road, officially. It was to promote regional commerce. In truth, this was to give the Portuguese settlers a faster and safer path to illegally enter Algeria. As they move further east, Pablo noticed the most unusual rock. There were many really large rocks out here, but this one was much flatter than the others, and ever so slightly green tinted color. And was that rust? Was that crackalas? It's not a rock, Pablo said. Oh my god, that's not a rock. As Pablo approached a truck, nearly completely buried by the sand, he shuddered to think of what he might see inside. Handshaking, he brushed away the dust that obscured the window. There he found bodies, sickly brown tissue clung tightly to dust-covered bones, empty eye sockets and teeth almost forming s smiles brought disquieting humanity to the emaciated husks before him. They were holding hands when they died, husband and wife surely, on the floor of the passenger seat rested a smaller corpse. Its skull was disarticulated from a torso wearing the tattered remnants of a baby clothes. Who was to say what doomed this family to die here? A flat tire, an empty fuel tank, a failed ignition. There are many ways to get lost out here, but no way to call for help. The dunes consume all in their paths. 
and our more rationed cars due to our inability to actively support the settlers of good Algeria. Most of them live in awful conditions, buildings uh, where families would share a bunk bed and restrooms are caused by does are used by dozens of people, that are, which are, is very common. Worst of all, a lot of settlers aren't able to find a new job and they rely on ration cars to survive. Since the area is underdeveloped or undeveloped and the government can't provide jobs, local authorities will now be able to expand the quality and quality of ration cars that are distributed among the settlers. This way we can ensure that they survive and venture claim all of Algeria for a glorious nation, of course. And of course, the Cadillo popularity, even though the union is equal and both Cadillos share the same powers, this doesn't mean that they are equally liked by the people. Iberian society is made up of many different groups, each with its own opinion of Salazar and Franco. The Out of Madrid wrote proposal, and surprisingly, the new flagship infrastructure plan has hit the same filter of survival that most policy proposals hit once both halves of the ever bickering union have access to information regarding them. Angry invoices and incessant phone calls to the Ministry of the Interior of Madrid were all the same nature, rejection of the plan to start construction of the proposed highway outside of the Spanish capital because of another trivial matter. The matter of the tools being used, not being exactly proportional in terms of our national origin, this obstacle has the potential to freeze the Iberian domestic arm of the government if not truly addressed. Thus, we have two options to consider for going forward. Use more construction equipment of Portuguese make, bribe them with a matching road in Lisbon. Let's go with that one. Even though we get like 0.6, oh, never mind, 0.12 political power every day, oh my god. Bureaucratic reinforcements. A matter is beyond the Sahara. Even though Iberia's other African possessions may not be as important as Morocco or Algeria, all we do well remember that the Iberian colonial empire goes far beyond the Sahara, sadly. These colonies aren't very, are very underdeveloped, with the government's attention focused on possessions closer to home in the deserts of North Africa, however. The latest reports show that Iberia's colonies to the south show quite an economic potential, with the climate in the Guineas perfect for agriculture and the several archipelagos possible sites for trade hubs. As such, a considerable amount of money has been reserved for the development of these regions, with the hopes of them becoming yet another prosperous part of Iberia in the future and business in Morocco. Consider the, the, the jewel of the colonial empire by Franco and most of the Spanish generals in Morocco, my friends. <clears throat> Yeah, it's by far the most well-developed colony that Iberia possesses. With its humble beginnings and as a Spanish protectorate of Morocco, which only controlled a sliver of territory in the north and a couple of enclaves in the east, the colony was expanded immensely through the annexation of the French protectorate at the close of the Second World War. Since then, the colony has seen a great number of businesses and settlers flock to it to exploit its natural resources. As such, we must ensure that Morocco stands strong and keeps creating revenue for the nation. The asphalt mixture, the planning phase of the new infrastructure project, has again been halted. At the early point of resource extraction stage, due to a dispute that began under the rather sharp Portuguese civil servant, noticed diverging Portuguese and Spanish material regulations on asphalt mixtures. There is a possibility that this may ruin the road if further work continues without any intervention. Considering that this will be a coordinated effort between both union members, it's important for propaganda reasons that this is done right. Then again, it's only a bigger road. The bigger projects around the horizon afterwards will be far better at helping to stabilize uh, Iberian unity. How should we proceed on the issue? Spanish soil, Spanish laws must be put. Appeal for federal laws on road construction material. Who needs regulations? We use what we brought along. Who needs political power? Estado Novo Velo Cadillo. Although a charismatic man in public and private, Antonio de Oliveira Salazar has always been an introverted and at times reclusive man. He never married and had no children. When he was not meeting with Franco or other politicians, he was usually alone in his residence, what, what prior to the Iberian unification was the Portuguese embassy in Madrid. He said his maid, Maria de Jesus, a woman too enamored with Salazar to leave his side despite knowing that Cadillo did not feel the same way about her as she did like him. It was only his close friend, his only close friend. While Salazar read a book in his study, Maria spotted up the bathroom in anticipation of guests. Special occasion for the Cadillo. As well as Sister Maria do Rasget Salazar de Oliveira. Oliveira was visiting today for the first time in four years. Salazar liked a few people interested even fewer, but he never doubted his sisters. The Cadillo answered the door, greeting his sister and her three daughters with warm embraces. Gosh, they had grown old to think. His sister now was a frail old woman of 80. His nieces had gray hair, much more prominent wrinkles than the last time they met, than what lovely years they had spent together. As they sat together in the living room, of course, and a pause appeared in the conversation, one of his nieces' eyes lit up. Antonio, I don't think I remember to tell you. Yes? Antonio is pregnant, and I think you're going to be great, your grand uncle. Oh, how the time goes by. Sway, people, Franco, Salazar, do their stuff. So, it's only March, but it's not looking great. Iberian economic melee sucks. Cripple sovereignty is very bad, too. City of the Union is still stable, which is good. Uh, Patrol of the Old Guard is not good. And we have a disorderly federal army, which is not good either, so. Oh boy. Expand Ifni. One of the most important ports within the Moroccan territory, Ifni holds both a military and naval base and since the mid 1950s. A considerable trading hub due to being one of the few ports Iberia owns in the Atlantic that can sustain large ship traffic. Now, the convoys and containers that come here just keep increasing with time, and there's always been a number of times when the port authorities had to redirect vessels to the secondary ports because Ifni was at full capacity. As a key element of the Moroccan economy, well, the government has decided to greatly expand the port to allow more ships in, and therefore increase the quantity of trade that flows into the region. 
The military naval base will also be expanded, although not as much as its civilian partner, for a better defense of the region. The question of repairs is the asphalt mixture problem resolved and the investigation underway. We've been given the go-ahead to start our project. State-sanctioned contractors are beginning to arrive in droves, already making great progress as they begin to tear out defunct infrastructure to implement the new great works. Both foreign and domestic journalists gasp and awe when they get their allotted time to visit the construction sites, a process requiring a great deal of effort and delay on our part as everything has to be prepared accordingly in advance. One such visit, will everything will change, however. Time coming to a freezing halt as a blood-curling scream tears down the perfect visage we created. An explosion of asphalt ruptures and now trembling earth through exposing cracks within the hardly setting concrete. Swaths of rope cratered in after tons of dynamite were preemptively detonated in the foundations of an interchange, reducing days of toil into rubble and ash. Large stockpiles of resources and machinery are lost in the horrific mess. Emergency services were deployed with the minutes, tending to wounds and attempting to pull out grasping bloody hands out of the char of piles of ruin. We've confirmed four deaths and over 32 workers injured, adding costly medical bails to the already colossal repairs we needed to immediately address. Out of the cry of Bitan Jorai, Ojeral. Well, as reported during the chaos, we have strong evidence supporting the notion that Basque separatists belonging to socialist organizations are directly responsible for the attacks based off reports of similar terrorist activities that have plagued other government-sponsored public works. The second has begun an investigation to address our suspicions, but in the meantime, we need to figure out how to amend or adjust our budget to deal with this shortfall. How should we recover from the disaster? Uh, as for a, a grant of Spanish tax money, grant of Iberian tax money. Uh, bureaucratic reinforcements. Due to the nature of the Algerian situation, our troops in the region have heard, had a hard time running the administration. Bureaucrats there are lacking, there are lacking, and as such as Commando Militar Algerino can barely be called a government. It's caused the reports to be scarce, numbers to be wrong, and most of the time causes problems with properly applying the law. To help the region prosper, we'll send a big group of civil servants disguised as settlers so that they can take the reins and create a proper administration in Algeria, the Knights of Malta. But if something does happen, what then? Concern cross Americo Thomas's face. Nothing's going to happen. We'll be fine. The conference had been planned months in advance to bring the leaders of the three great nations to the med of the med to one table. Who was a America to doubt its security? Franco could be terribly obstinate at times, but this this was just stupid. It'd be the first time in Iberia's history that the two Cadillos simultaneously left the peninsula. Tomas tried to hide his annoyance. My Cadillo, with all due respect, you are a multiple man, and even the chance of anything goes wrong is slim. All Iberia could be destroyed if something does. We're sending bodyguards with you, and they will remain with you at all times. The same goes for Cadillo Salazar. Look, I don't want some some. Uh, excuse me, I don't want anyone watching me while I'm watching. I'm gosh darn sleeping. So for your protection and federal tax money proposal, a request for more federal tax money to be used for repairing the road has been finally being accepted by both officials in both Madrid and Lisbon. Our constructions can now hopefully continue and eventually finish without any further delay. Thank goodness and the mighty whale. Francisco Franco's magnificent 47-meter yacht cruised through the Atlantic waters. It was a vacation of sorts, a few days to spend away from governing before the Malta conference. No trip out to sea, thought Franco, would be complete without a great catch to commemorate the voyage. The Bay of Biscay had long been a hunting ground for whalers. Its deep undersea canyons provided a home for deep divers, while fertile reefs provided for the shallow sea whales. And Franco would keep searching the bay until they found one. Hours passed, and the sky turned orange as the sun near the horizon. The wind was still, and the water was clear. Droplets of water sprayed in the distance, and for, for a few seconds, the back of an enormous sperm whale rose above the surface. Artega, maximum power, as a yacht turned towards the beast, its motor roared to life and raced forward. Rapid clicks, each as a loud as a shotgun blast, had most sailors covering their ears. Not Franco, he insisted. He would operate the harpoon, he would not allow size, spear, or sound to stop him. He rigs the weapon, now just a matter of aiming. Good. He did not expect a thing, just to hold still. Boom! The explosive attached to the harpoon detonates, blasting water and chunks of flesh into the air and turning the surrounding water red. The whale thrashed around, but it only worsened the bleeding, and Franco now joined his men to the ropes, dragging the monster aboard as it made its final feeble movements, ten meters long and god knows how many tons. A fortuitous omen for the conference, surely. I apologize for speaking really fast, because I just, I'm a naturally fast speaker, so. Um. Opportunities in Guinea. Several prominent businessmen approached the government with a plan to start building orchids, orchards in Guinea. They said that the climate in the colony is perfect for it and they would provide jobs for most of the population there. To further try to convince us to accept, they pledged to do all the necessary work to clean up the defense jungle there, create the necessary infrastructure to transfer the goods and run the orchards. So the government would only see profit. While it seems that this plan is perfect, the people behind it are infamous in the high circles of Iberian society for having frequent contacts with Siegfried Müller, the Reichskommissar of Central Africa. Central Africa has been revealed to submit to the natives. Submit the natives to a state of near slavery when working their plantations, but this won't happen in Guinea, right? Invitation to Iberia. As a formal member of the Triumvirate, the Cadillos of the Union of Iberia, Francisco Franco Pajomond and Antonio de Oliveira Salazar are invited to the conference that will be held in the Augberga de Castile, Malta. The Franco's name being put before Salazar has already started a protocol crisis in the Portuguese government. Though Cadillo Salazar is not personally concerned with this minor infraction, Iberia will be present at the conference. Time to take a stand. Time to take a stand. Yeah, it says we do have a cup of tea or two. Hmm. Ah. It's black tea. 
and electrify Equatorial Guinea. Now, southern frontier around Empire, Equatorial Guinea has been a part of Spain for almost 100 years now, expanding in the late 40s. With the chaos in Africa, now it stands as the first line of defense against German aggression on the continent. However, just like the rest of the southern parts of the Empire, they say that Equatorial Guinea and it could be much better. Well, the colony is relatively developed and urban, it lacks proper electrical infrastructure throughout most of its territory. The result is, a special commission of the electrical uh, company, ENSA, will be sent there to oversee and participate in the electrification of the region. And no new speech. As Siano steps down from the stage, no, Siano gives the opening speech. Over the last few days, the delegates from around the triumvirate have arrived. Tensions are high, and many attendees aren't exactly sure what the purpose of the conference is. Uh, those questions, however, are set to be answered as Duce Galesio Siano takes the stage, and our delegates here begins. Uh, we have gathered here today to put aside our differences and reaffirm the agreements of our alliance. I know many of you have disputes and issues to raise, and this is the place to do it. Many of the audience are shocked by the bluntness of the words, but there are a few smiles. At least they recognize this is going to be another complete crap show of members of one Turkish diplomat to another. The time of was forged in fire, as Seattle continues, and as the world falls back into chaos, we must be open and frank with one another if our alliance has to survive. We're like brothers, squabbling sometimes, but always united in purpose and bound by a familial love and common history, as Seattle finished. I now have my brother from Turkey taking the stage. Let's get this over with. Inonu's speech. As Siano steps down from the stage of Turkish President Ismet Inonu, walks forward, and while the Turkish delegation responds with raucous applause, the rest of the delegation is rather muted. I'll not bore you with bland pleasantries like the Duce. You know, he's halting uh, Italians overcome by the directness of his words. Siano is right in one regard, and it brings up our shared history. We have a history of disputed borders, he roars. Oh, boy. Yeah. The Turkish delegation responds with shots and cheers, while the rest of the conference looks on sullenly. Many expected such a response, but few were prepared for the directness of the president's words. I'm not opposed to throwing vert in and of itself, Inonu continues. The collective security offers is a blessing in this tumultuous world, but if Turkey is to continue to remain a member, we must have our ancestral lines back. We are fed up with European domination of our sphere of influence. I look forward to meeting with the leaders of our alliance to discuss our disputed claims and the return to the rebel motherland, Turkey. Uh, the Turkish delegation practically leaping the seats, climbing their feet on the ground, and cheering, worrisome in the investigation. After the bureaucratic nightmare that was finding the necessary funds for the desperately needed repairs, it seemed as if we may at last proceed. This, many confused workmen were finally allowed back on site with the immense amount of resources made again available, and the heavy machinery was driven out of storage, if only if it were so simple. In the early hours of the morning the, of the official repairs, the construction site was suddenly war swarmed with mysterious men in dark suits, who quickly cordoned off the area and hustled several of the foremen into black vans before ordering the workers to vacate the site immediately. When the regional governor's officer received a phone call from one of the contractors to explain what had happened, he was furious. However, the tone was dampened by the arrival of several second agents bringing less than ideal news. They already identified the people responsible for the bombings, a group of radicalized Basque students turned separatists with leftist leanings. The ringleader was one Ignigno Nunez, cousin of Alfredo Nunez, uh, one of the foremen for the contractor hired on the project. Second, I had reason to believe that Alfredo may have aided his cousin's terrorist cell in organizing the bombing that he was not only the only one operating on the inside. They have obtained an official warrant to fully investigate and all the contractors we have hired in order to vet them for any associates of Alfredo who may share a separatist ideology. In the meantime, all royal work must be halted for the duration of the investigation and be effective immediately to make sure no further damage can be inflicted on the already controversial stricken policy or project. Are you are you really really kill, ki killing me? Kidding me? Kidding me? Not killing me? Better not. I got, I'm too busy for that. But happy lag and auto saving everybody. Reinforce Maritania. Although not a frontier colony in itself, uh, Maritania is considered the wide frontier of the colonial empire. Settlements are scarce, infrastructure is poor, and worst of all, bandits are a common occurrence. Natives that didn't accept Liberian rule when the area was pacified in the 50s regularly raid any town or village they find, no matter who inhabits it. Maritania has viable minerals underneath it, and under their extract would be great creating jobs and wealth for the region, but with the bandits running around, no serious attempt at mining has been tried. If we want to develop the region and obtain its riches, the first step is sending more troops and building more military infrastructure down there to fight those who work against us. Franco's and Salazar's speech, but the national animal first. Iberian unity has always been a rather dicey affair, especially in these uh, turbulent times. While there's many who would use the instability to add bad to the cause of their own ethnic group, there are also plenty of loyal citizens who wish to keep our union intact. Artists, musicians, politi politicians, and even ordinary people have been known to come together to try and define a united, unified Iberian culture, usually. They are mere blips on the radar, but sometimes something extraordinary comes from it, like the shared conquistador pride or the fact that both Portuguese and Spanish have a hatred for Moors, and sometimes these attempts end in a disaster. It all started off as a well-meaning collaboration between the Lisbon and uh, Madrid art guilds, and also producing a piece of art that symbolized the unity of Spain and Portugal. After some deliberation, the artists agreed that the project would consist of a giant rose displaying what they hoped to be Iberia's new national animal. Taking the Spanish bull and the Portuguese rooster as a piece of inspiration, the artists slaved away a day and had to create a masterpiece. 
Unfortunately, when it was finally unveiled to the crowd two weeks later, the reactions were less than stellar. The finished project, which for some reason ended up being a mix of an amalgamation of rooster and cow body parts with seven pairs of horns and at least three heads, immediately earned the ire of the entire nation that they were trying to appeal to. Despite, it's described by onlookers invariably as an abomination, a piece of vomit-inducing graffiti. They wouldn't pass it in an American art school and prove that the Jesus died in vain. The big matters worse, the Iberian Chimera, as it now been dubbed, was leaked to the international community where in many countries it seems to have caught on immediately. Fortunately, in the grand scale of things, this isn't a factor nation too much, but the mental link between the Iberian and the Elderest Rooster Bull from heck and the minds of foreigners won't go anytime soon. What a little bull. Franklin and Salazar speech now. All through their dangerous inflammatory speech, it was time for the two Cadillas of Iberia to take the stage. The two walked together, rubbing shoulders in their attempts to follow the formal protocol Salazar spoke first. Honored leaders began, we wish to see the triumvir remain united just like our friend and ally, a president Inonu, which isn't just like him, we have disputes of our own to solve. To solve. Franco picked up there, however. Unlike him, we will not resort to threats and national agitation. We choose seek a truly equal agreement for all parties of the triumvirate. That was made up by jeers and heckling from some of the audience. We're all equal partners in this great alliance. Remember, for whatever reason you are here, there's one more issue more important than all of the rest. The preservation of the Mediterranean Brotherhood and one united. The two awkwardly took turns speaking for around half an hour, and while they were met with a polite applause from the audience, a few fair had dozed off by the time they finished. For the Mediterranean Brotherhood, the creation of modern Guinea. Colonial slavery began with Portugal. Ha! The Portuguese, great job. The first Portuguese settlements in Guinea became the first large slave depot for European colonists. For four centuries, tens of thousands of Africans were shipped every single year from Guinea to the colonies of the New World in chains. Colonial slavery was ended, ended with Portugal, though. Portuguese merchants sailing from Guinea sending the final slaves of Brazil when the country abolished a trade. Portuguese administrators struggled to find alternative uses for the colony, ultimately coming to rely on modestly profitable peanut farms used to produce cooking oil. On the eve of the unification, Guinea was an economic burden. Peanut farms had fallen dramatically, and most farmers had to return to subsistence rice farming. The cost of maintaining control of Guinea far exceeded its profits. Businessman Antonio Silva had owned successful cashew orchards in Goa, but his fortunes were dashed by the Indian invasion in 1947. He began to build a new cashew empire in Guinea. In the 50s, Silva successfully lobbied for high tariffs on foreign grown cashews. He launched an extensive advertising campaign for his cashews across Siberia in 1956, turned his first annual profit, enticed. Various investors pitched in, and the cashew orchards uh, greatly expanded by the end of the decade. As the second generation of cashew trees grow tall enough to produce fruit, in 1962, cashews are becoming cheaper and more widely available throughout Iberia. After consideration by the Colonial Budget Committee, it is agreed that the native land may be expropriated for the development of new orchards, and Africans may have their sentences commuted by choosing to serve a half-length sentence in the cashew orchards. Now, Guinea prospers more profitable than it has in any other year post-abolition. Slavery has begun by birth, but has it really ended? Investigation finds some suspicious activity. The investigation of the Outer Madrid Road project has found several suspicious practices, including fraud, bribery, and neglect of proper vetting procedures for, for employees. Heavy fines being drafted for road building company to try to, try to minimize uh, mitigating damage to the government. The issue of further dragging the project on is hardly even being considered at this point. It could be worse. The opening of the Canal Conference. A major point of contention among the delegates is the Suez Canal. Transferred to Italian control over following the victory in Egypt, they have held sole authority over the transit over the canal since then, forcing other triumvirate members to pay dues just like any other country outside of the alliance. Iberia especially has strong, long awaited access to the canal, as they lack the ground presence of Turkey in the region. Italian and Iberian delegates, with observers from other triumvirate member nations, have gathered in an opulent ballroom to discuss access to the canal. Let us begin. Christian Autumn. Connect the islands. Besides the Azores, Madeira, Baleares, and uh, the Isla Canaris. Canarias. Canarias. Uh, Iberia owns several archipelagos far from the peninsula. Cape Verde, Sao Tome, uh, uh, Príncipe, and Fernando Po. These Islands have a very small population and are mostly agrarian, therefore the attention they have received from the central government is almost non-existent. The infrastructure is weak and they depend on the transport convoys that regularly tour them to give them supplies like medicines and machines. These convoys apparently don't visit the islands with enough frequency as there have been several angry letters from the governors here asking for more frequent supply deliveries. To alleviate this, convoy visits will be made twice a month, not only that, but bigger ports will be built in the islands to better integrate them into the country with frequent civilian transport ships doing the trip between these archipelagos and the peninsula. Iberia demands. In the first negotiation session, Iberian diplomat Fernando Maria Castillo e Maez demanded Iberia have equal access to the canal. Deliberations continued for hours until finally the Spaniards slammed his hand on the table. You've held the canal for too darn long, he yelled. Why the heck should we, your ally, be forced to pay to use it? We'll even give you a one time lump sum of aid money if you give us unlimited access. That's my final offer. You can take it or leave it. Things are heating up. And Siano attempts to negotiate. He replied, as Siano does, Gentlemen, let's be silver. I'm not sure if I'm willing to take the trade, but perhaps we can come to another agreement. The Iberian delegation nods warily. Siano and other Italian delegates quickly leave the room, whispering quietly while the Iberians deliberate among themselves. Let's see how this goes. It's probably going to explode. We have a bad yearly deficit. A lot of social spending. 
And when I mean a lot, I mean a lot. I don't want her to grow up, but I want to cut down on inflation too. Inflation's looking pretty bad. Just lots of industry and stuff. Connect the islands. And have more tea. I go and counter offer them. They rejoin a few hours later. What about Algeria, Castilla, and my brooches? We'll take it and they loan insurrection off your hands and we just forget this whole dispute. Your colonial force. Uh, our our bricks are in it, and you know what? This may be a bit too much. The bandits of the Sahel. Kadiditao was no stranger to the bandit raids. It had not been this bad even just a few years ago, but ever since the Amadu gang had acquired trucks. So the Maratania have been a low grade war zone. Militiamen now guarded the outskirts of the town of Alec. Years of raids had turned the Alec militia larger and more experienced. Usually the Amados picked easier targets. Patrols were scarce in the remote corner of the Iberian Empire, and Kadidadao Kadidayato referred to that way. The Europeans were thieving tax, men no more than another gang of bandits too numerous and well armed for the militia to dare resist. Not only would they want to resist after all, it was the Iberians who supplied the militiamen with weapons and important luxuries. A convoy of trucks appeared on the horizon. Iberians, of course, but why were they here? This is not a scheduled ammo delivery or tax collection, and the convoy was twice as long as any Kadidityao to ever seen. Dozens of European men, many armed with semi automatic rifles, stepped out and began unloading cargo. Why were they here? Security? I'll let go of security. Sure. Occasional raids still took place, but at this point, bandits stole less from the townspeople than the militiamen, them, militiamen themselves. And the Iberians are here because they think they can take out the ga bandit gangs. They're going to need a lot more guns, but land expansions? The project should have been simple. It should have been just a two lane road going from point A to point B. Yet sadly, nothing can be done that simple. There are turbulent times for Iberia, a political union where the building of a road is vastly outdone in effort just by the time scale of getting everything about said road approved with multiple administrations. Every little thing must bear its 50 clauses and 100 subsections, as though the mix of the pavement itself could potentially spark an inter ethnic conflict were it not for co corpulent bureaucracy that keeps us moving at snail space. The government of Madrid has now become involved in the construction of the road, and with it becomes an entirely other magnitude of legislature and administration. The bombing of the road is forced to create an extra wide shoulder to be able to actually get equipment around the crater left by said attack. Madrid is not demanding that we turn the shoulder into an entirely new lane. They either have no idea what they're asking for, or more likely they don't care. It's the case for the federal government. You'd have to file a pile's worth of appeal paperwork asking for a permit to actually alter the road we're working on, and then of course there's a lengthy waiting period all just to go to a committee of pencil pushers and nepotists. They can take a quick glance at the paperwork and grant or deny requests on what feels like a whim. Madrid's ignorance on the realities in the ground are mind-numbing. We can't just turn a larger than average shoulder into an entirely new lane. The shoulder would have to be expanded, the budget would have to be reconsidered, and we'd just fall once more into the seemingly endless abyss of bureaucracy we've been dealing with for the past months. Feel the aggressive appeal of the federal government, do not claim to heck with the city government. Ah, oh, appeal. Because why not? And Siana refuses again. Yeah, Siana, he fires back. Ridiculous. We trusted you for 20 years and decided you were past trying to steal our territory without we fired blood for. Of course, not the negotiations are over. The Iberian delegates shocked reply. It's outrageous. We expect to be treated equals, not children. We continued by claiming that they would not participate or in lighter discussions over territory disputes and concluded with a seething attack on Siana. We joined you tickets to go because you promised equality and freedom for, from tyranny, but now, you know better than the Germans. Luring over us like some petty rocks come aside, we're done with this conference. Not surprising. The Portuguese denied the permit. Now, the Portuguese government has unfortunately decided to deny a request to alter the construction permit to fit more lanes on the current flagship infrastructure project of Simon Dream. They claim that a multiple municipal government such as ours has neither the ability nor the right to make these kinds of major changes to a project that so clearly falls under federal jurisdiction. This does not only mean that there will not be any land expansions, but it's also a decidedly chilly mood for future negotiations on the project. Despite our proximity to the infrastructure, and therefore the high end fallout, whether positive or negative for us, we can only hope that they will be more reasonable in the future when it comes to the project, as is any further involvement on our part is being opposed to the high government levels. At least we save some money. These are still stable. New equipment for the garrisons. The colony army was where a great number of today's high command developed their early career, Franco himself included. It was also key element in the crushing of the uh, uh, Civil War, Spanish Civil War, or crushing the communists during the Spanish Civil War, and it fought bravely against the Mauritanian rebels in the 50s. To this day, it's the first line of defense against any possible invaders that may strike the colonies first, and is also in charge of keeping peace in our territories beyond Gibraltar. As such, it should be welcomed at all times. While it's been lacking in the last few years due to the budget mismanagement, the colonial officers I'll be happy to hear that their boys are getting some brand new toys just as good as those of the Peninsula troops use. I barely won't attend the board conference. True to the word, beer and delegates were nowhere to be seen this morning as the various dignitaries took their seats for the board conference. Turkish diplomats looked relieved while Italian delegates shared word glances. Siona feared the conference was collapsing around him. Let's have them, let's have them, have them their little charade. 
Mohammed V of Morocco died late in 1961, and his son Hassan II took charge of the Moroccan throne shortly after. Even though Mohammed was subservient to Iberia, he was a man of great intelligence and sense of survival, and played with us like we were his puppets, managing to accumulate a great deal of power for the Moroccan crown. Now that his son is the Moroccan king and he has been partially educated to respect Iberian authorities, some members of the government fear that he may take this take after his father and maneuver to achieve more power. That's why they're suggesting the allowance the government gives to the Moroccan king is revisited and curtailed to decrease the powers of the monarch, whether it's through a small quantity of money or a stronger group on his influence. So he negotiates, huh? Well, let's talk about the border conference first. Uh, uh, by and far the largest conflict in the Triumvirate of the many border disputes that have sparked up in the Triumvirate between all three members. For this problem to be resolved, there will be two full days dedicated to negotiating over the nature of these disputed territories. The event started with a noticeable lack of Iberian diplomats as they informed their hosts that they refused to attend it beforehand. As if they're holier than all of us, the president, Ismet Inonu, took the podium with an oversized chart of the eastern Mediterranean following behind him and among the rest of the entourage. He began to explain the convoluted ancient importance of Cyprus and Rose of Turkey and the demographics of the islands, particularly what Inonu described as the overwhelming majority of ethnic pure Turks. Rose and Cyprus, controlled by the Italians and the Greek client state, have long been a thorn on Turkey's side due to in part to the large minority of Turks, but also more importantly because of their vital strategic importance, serving as the inlets into the Aegean and the Eastern Mediterranean. As the triumvirate deteriorates, and with the Italian Turkish relationship becoming one of thinly veiled threats and backhand slaps instead of friends and allies, Inun has become much more vocal regarding the issue of these rightfully Turkish lands being denied union with the Turkish state. Our demands are clear. We only ask for what's been ours for a millennia, were the words of Inunu on the proposed concessions. We'll not back down, we'll not fold, we'll not stop until we have it. A reminder of what action Turkey will surely take should their demands be refused. Looks like the Iberians aren't the only ones, but neg Siano negotiates. He pauses. I think we can make a deal here. Those islands were originally naval bases. They are terribly useful as part of the mainland, so I think we can come to some sort of agreement. You know, you know this well. Absolutely, let's meet and discuss this with a shot and travel inventory. Even though the uh, Moroccan coast is fairly urbanized, and interior is a great deal of small, isolated villages and caravans that live in the harsh environment of the Sahara Desert. Normal accountability in these regions is hard to do, and as such, a yearly inventory is done where several bureaucrats travel to the remote settlements and follow the caravans of both make them pay the annual taxes, as well as keep track of the state that these people live in, uh, in case it was necessary for the authorities to intervene and gain them any sort of aid. Negotiations, of course, break down. Negotiations have been going well, with the status of some of the islands decided at last, at least until he known stamped. Why do you insist on treating us like inferiors, he yelled at Siano. Why are you acting like some benevolent god restoring these lands to us? You should be apologizing and paying reparations for your illegal colonial, illegal colonial occupation. These lands aren't yours to give away, they're Turkish by blood. It had to end like that, and construction planning finalized. Oh, they actually went to. Uh, they're, uh, they're just going to work with Yugoslavia. Uh, I don't want any more issues with stability. After a long period of bureaucratic delays and general pitfalls, it seems that the construction of the Outer Madrid Roads is finally proceeding smoothly. Senior contractors and civil servants have created multiple detailed models with all currently projected it to be finished in several months, along as the finally move on with other, more grand parts of our infrastructure overall program. Let's hope it really is delayed a couple months, because my god, this has been taking forever. This is so bad. I apologize that I speak fast too, but the Malta Conference has been bombed. Oh, good! The first reports that reached Rome were sporadic and disjointed. A fire broke out in the city of Burgu. The Turks had prepared a trap and invaded Malta. The Kriegsmarine were shelling the Fort St. Angelo. Someone tried to shoot up Duce. Attempts to verify everything were unsuccessful. Or the phone lines of the conference site were all down. Some tried to formulate all this into a single narrative, but it was so self contradictory that it was fruitless. And all anyone could do was wait and pray for good news. Thankfully, it was waited only several minutes before it was confirmed that the Duce was alive and would be returned to Rome in post haste. The clear details all began to trickle in. The bomb went off in Fort St. Angelo, obliterating the conference room, and both the president and the Cadillus survived unscathed due to good timing. They didn't need the bombers unknown, and if it was done by any of the triumvirs of other member states, it was unlikely that they would take responsibility. Some in Rome have already begun to point fingers at Iberia and Turkey, and some undoubtedly those who accuse us. While well, tensions were high going into the meeting, they are now absolutely astronomical. The bombers' goal is to slow, sow chaos, and the Mediterranean, they have success, succeeded beyond his wildest dreams, just when it couldn't get any worse. Back to a very proper. Now that the colonies are ready to face the year, the focus of the government will return to the peninsula to attend and fix the problems of the people of Iberia. New industrial initiatives and public work projects have already been confirmed, with hopes of stimulating the economy and avoid the recession that has been looming over our heads for a couple years now. Other measures have also been revealed, like a review of the conscription laws and updates for the bureaucracy. Oh, and there goes the triumvirate. It's all, it was only a matter of time. Leaving the triumvirate with a catastrophic breakdown and the dissolution of the triumvirate, Iberia now sounds off alone in a drift. A significant reforms may come into play as it could be used to determine what course of action is necessary. We stand alone. Iberia and Turkey blame Italy with draw delegates. Unsurprisingly, out of all of the members of the Triumvirate, nobody's willing to take responsibility of the bombings. Though Italy claimed they had nothing to do with the bombings and they had zero incentive to do so, it's now stopped Iberia and Turkey from blaming the Italians for the whole fiasco. Both Iberia and Turkey have withdrawn the delegates from the conference, stating that it's in, that it's clear they're not safe for them to be there. Time to end this charade. 
I might have to cut down social expenditures. And I might still need to delete the Navy, but we'll see when we get there. Oh, right, the end of the triumph. I know I've read all these before, but like, I've not played Iberia in a long time, and I'm trying to get uh, liberals in thinking power. We'll see. Any last acts in order to say the European anti German alliance have ultimately come short. The bulwark against Northern Tyranny has fallen, and now all former member states stand alone. They are stressed for each other to triumph over the previously strong call for unity in the face of economic collapse, and thus a decline in Teuton's ability to enact macht politique. This cause lost its power, and all that remained was unresolved tension between the members of the Triumvirate. Ideology and imperial ambitions tore the seams of an alliance, but it was really the lack of unified purpose that kept our beer tricking Italy together. With the Triumvirate government, must decide now, of course, for the, uh, for the future. Who needs friends? A world of acquaintances. I'm not sure what I chose last time. Severed ties with their ex allies. Foreign mistrust. Greater secrecy. Counterintelligence operations will expand and emphasize the Union. Open up with the entire world. Trade volume. I kind of like this, but I don't want more despotism. Dream to the East. Saudis. Go down under. Everyone knows Iberia. Silver ties. Help Italy. Help Turkey. World of acquaintances. Who needs friends? Uh... Well, let me double check what we have here, and then we'll see what we'll do after the Triumvirate. So, the dissolution of the Triumvirate has been a wake-up call for Iberia, with the government scrambling to keep the Union afloat in the wake of the collapse. Cadillo Franco has taken it upon himself to lead the effort in making long overdue changes to improve Iberia's internal stability, as well as strengthening her position in the Med. Despite this being sorely needed, making these decisions will doubtlessly make Franco new enemies across the Iberian society. Where Franco's popularity did fall significantly during the trying time, the stability of the nation could be in jeopardy when he's needed most. Reshuffle command of troops in Algeria. Complacent, yes, men. Carriers are leading the garrison in Algeria. They must be reassessed. Um, so, what is this? Foreign leaders from Franco. Colonial settlers. Businessmen and bureaucrats generally like Salazar. The military is fully Franco aligned. Uphold the status of Spanish and Portuguese. All citizens of Iberia must know that there are only two languages of the land. Make union, make to, in order to make the union run smoothly, some national quirks must be sidelined. We'll let the Italians know that we condemn their aggressive posturing in Algeria. If we get no discussion about native Algerian independence, it is Iberian land. Uh, natives? Who cares a bad word about natives? Uh, sellers like Salazar. The natives don't have a preference. Foreign leaders lean towards Franco, though. Sad on the most radical retornados. There's to be a place in Algeria the most ardent Portuguese settlers must be neutered. Oh, look at this. Infantry pro democracy groups in academia. Our influence in academia is waning, and betting in favorable representatives there is crucial. Working intellectuals, less liberalism, which we don't want, publicly commend Opus die. Worsen the church's opinion. Market liberals are strengthened by this. The men of the Opus die should be compensated for their aid of Iberia, despite much of their population skepticism. What's the church's opinion? Lean towards us. Uh, we can piss off the military, or really just colonial natives can, can be pissed off too. Italian encroachment, huh? Silent majority. Uh, regional regionalists. The regionalists don't have a preference either. I need we need political power. So we have to use at least one of these. Foreign leaders. Natives. Well, speaking out against Algerian Trade separatism. debate. Triumvir Terrace. With the collapse of Triumvir, many of Iberia's former trade partners have suddenly declared themselves hostile to the nation. Today in the meeting in Galicia, the two Caudillos discussed the possibility of levying tariffs on Italy and Turkey. Well, they generally agreed that tariffs were a decent idea, the discussion was quickly bogged down by a furious argument over exactly what products had the highest priority to levy tariffs on. Spanish and Portuguese institutions both provided conflicting data, much of which was severely out of date. Once the dust settled, no comprehensive agreement had been reached. Can't agree on anything. Mm. But we are going to go down world acquaintances now. I did go, technically go down this path last time. <laughs> but doing the despotist, uh, despotist pass, uh, pass, path is uh, kind of difficult, honestly, so... Oh, we're of acquaintances. With the betrayal of our former close allies, we now stand alone on the world's stage, surrounded by leering enemies ready to take advantage of any weakness we may show. Some have argued that it is now necessary to push for the isolation, having never to rely on anyone else again to avoid the same diplomatic catastrophe, and to push for a strong, unified state capable of withstanding external force. Officials in the government have, however, realized that such a pursuit would be ultimately leave Liberia, Iberia in a far more vulnerable position. We must therefore look forward and towards establishing ties around the world to scout out new diplomatic possibilities, positive relations with as many nations as possible. Could be usually beneficial to trade, security, and diplomacy. Fair sourcing. 
With the other in indecision of the previous debate, the Kadiyos have moved on to a new topic, namely precisely where the money from potential tariffs would go. Oh, Again, the consensus was not reached, with precise ratios not being worked out. The issue of the Union government not receiving any sort of reasonable amount of funding appears to be likely to persist indefinitely, as the Kadiyos clash over what factors shall determine which administration will collect and distribute tariff money. We needed that on the day of the Union. Today is a wondrous month, summer day. As everyone across the Union enjoys a public holiday to celebrate the anniversary of our two nations being drawn together into one mighty whole, Caudillo Franco gave a rousing speech before an adoring crowd in both Portuguese and Spanish. At the same time, the elderly Caudillo Salazar also appeared and gave a speech calling for all peoples of Iberia to throw themselves into the great task of restoring the greatness Iberia once held, a union for us all. Across the pond, severed ties with our ex allies, it has come to a time that we need to remove all the links with our previous alliance partners. Following the collapse of the Triumvirate, previously massed tensions have flared up, showing that Italy and Turkey were always seeking to further their own goals rather than joining a unified challenge uh, to uh, German he European hegemony. We must hence sever previous sides that held us together, whether they be cultural or institutional. Allowing these sides to persist would leave us in a vulnerable position, ready to be exploited by the unscrupulous Italians and Turks. So now we have a bit of, a bit of political power, not much, but a bit. Um, reshuffle command of troops, a new case. Oh, crap. Mmm... Worse than the church's popularity. The church probably likes us, don't they? Well, the church says uh, they lean towards Franco. Social liberals are weakened. Um, regional nationalists. They don't have a preference. Yeah. It's only 1%, but we already don't have stability. It's only for 10 political power. That's not really worth it, is it? <coughs> well, it might be. In a new case. Small pebbles were thrown up as a police car rushed along the... Winding cobbled road which separated the outskirts of Valladolid from their destination. Observing the d d dancing shadows in the trees created by the headlights, the inspector scoffed. Separated the estate from the edge of civilization, more like. Quietly laughing at his own joke, he noticed that the driver was looking at him through the uh, car mirror. Is everything okay, sir? Surprised at the genuine sound of concern laced into the question, he, the inspector turned to face his colleague. I was just thinking what a pathetic case this likely will be. The inspector could see both disgust and surprise in the sergeant's eyes. How so? A young girl from a noble family has been reported missing. The social status. Now oh, the family does not exceed the class of provincial nobility. Following this reply, the sergeant raised his eyebrows questioningly while the inspector continued unabashed. She likely ran away. Responsibility associated with being the eldest daughter or maintaining social etiquette, having no real free choice. You can see the sergeant briefly nodding, but the rest of the journey was dominated by a littering silence. The car was greeted formally as if the policemen were distinguished guests. Following a brief and fruitless discussion with the standing family members, the inspector went to search for the house. Noticing no signs of forced entry or other indications of violent crime, he tasked the sergeant with questioning the servants. After only two interviews, the sergeant rushed back to the inspector. Maybe you were right. It seems the daughter was close to one particular servant who has not returned to work for a few days. The inspector smiled weakly. He may have stated his ego, but the girl was still missing. An opportunity to, make, to make a name for himself. Returning to the East, visiting America, help Turkey. Um, this stuff is going on now. Well, who do we not like? Do we like Turkey more? Or these guys? No more shared intelligence. More stability. Immigration and watch. More population. Come back home. Help Italy. Retrieve our troops. Oh, I kind of like this one. Expel Italian advisors. Ex worse than the military's opinion, though. Improve the military's opinion. Worse than the businessman's opinion of Franco. Pull our investments from Italy. Um. So worse than the businessman over here. Military immigration. I'm pretty sure I went this t this way last time. So, um, I just don't want to worse than the businessman's opinion of Franco. They lean towards Salazar already. Hmm. Well, we could try. You know what? We're gonna help Italy first. Or hmm. We wanna maybe help Turkey. Well, help Turkey first. Why not? With the collapse of the anti-German alliance, the tensions between the Mediterranean nations have risen to a dangerous level. One source of tension: the Italian colonial holdings in the Middle East, which border the Turkish state, has sparked an international crisis, which truly shows the extent to which former relations have entirely broken down. Turkey is starting to use direct military force to seize the lands it claims to be rightfully part of its nation. Italy's vow to resist aggressive invaders, invoking comparisons to a German diplomatic tact. Our choice on whether we should get involved has been excited. We need support the Turkish invasion in order to greatly weaken the Italian Empire. This can mean that in the near future we may be able to assert claims, own claims, undisputed lands. The intervention will however not involve troops in direct intervention, rather than which will subversively funnel equipment to the Turks, who seem capable of fighting their own war. Oh, poor ownership. After the disastrous attempt at negotiating tariffs, the Kadiyos have taken another topic and to be tormented. The matter of the day is now poor ownership, namely the question of which administration owns and national ports. While Salazar insists that regional governments should be in control of the ports, Franco argues that all ports should be under the direct control of the Union itself. After nearly three hours of argument, the decision was unable to come to a satisfactory conclusion, and thus been delayed until the next meeting. Until then, Iberia's ports shall be held in earnest certain hands. At least it wasn't something more important. You know, it's only ports. Only the ports. 
Good morning is enough. Regularized uh, relations, huh? Thanks if you hold on, huh? But happy September, everybody. One day's left, nice. But well, we're gonna retrieve our troops. Following the reorganization of the world order, the Mediterranean powers gained access to a second-rate portion of the spoils of the war. Despite this, the large colonial holdings that the members of the Triumvirate acquired are nothing to be scoffed at. In order to protect them from outside influence and internal instability, a number of unified military missions were sent across the empires. In these days, we can no longer justify the stationing of our troops in Italian and Turkish territory. Allies of old have now become bitter enemies. We must recall our troops so that there is no justification for an international crisis, and we shall redeploy them to more necessary fields of operation across our own empire. Railway gauge. The final topic in the Caudillo's hellish trade conference is the matter of the railway, railroad gauge. Certain obscure railroads in inner Spain are unusable or unable to support railroad cars. Railroad cars wide enough to hold standardized shipping containers. Thus, Franco argues, federal funding must be granted to expand the railroad tracks to regulation's length. Salazar, though, does not agree, saying that the shipping of maritime containers through inland Spain is useless, when containers can simply be unloaded and processed on Portuguese soil. The esoteric argument managed to last longer than any other and ended in bitter indecision. Was it to be this? Iberia meant to be this dysfunctional? Yes, it was. And we also have no money here. Look at this economic sphere, a member of the Iberian sphere, which is led by the Iberian Union. The Dominican Republic, Commando Militar Argelino, Principality of Andorra. We need more money. We do military austerity, but that doesn't help us very much. Foreign taxation. The conference on taxation has begun with the most crucial item on the list, namely taxing foreign assets. I bear due its weak federal tax code as a reputation as a tax haven equitable to the worst of the West Indies. In this debate, several schools of thought have clashed, with some arguing to end Iberia's status as a de facto tax haven, while others believe that any taxation at all will lower investments and make the country worse off than it started. In the end, no side prevailed, as Caudillo's Franco and Salazar split on the issue of potential tax discrimination by country of origin. That was important. Expel Italian advisors. Uh, during former times of cooperation, the Italian army continued the tradition of supporting right wing elements in Iberia, built up following this fascist seizure of power. Following the unification of the peninsula and the formation of the Triumvirate, a number of the military, Italian military missions were sent to Iberia in order to help them to modernize the fledging Iberian army and organize better communication channels for the future allied operations. However, now that the anti-German alliance has been broken and relations are at a low point, there seems to be no more reason to keep the missions in the country. We should move to expel the foreign military personnel thus to begin to parse back sensitive information to the Italian state. Even if our own army may begin against this move, we have to prioritize the security of our Iberian state. Income taxation. Another dreaded topic of tax discussion was the potential of a federal income tax. While well, general support amongst the Opus Dei economists recently allowed in the government, the Cadillos are still bitterly split on the decision. Salazar, ever the corporatist, refuses to agree with any sort of concrete estimate of an, on a tax amount or collection mechanism. Thus, once more, an idea sinks into the pits of Iberian government and is forever lost. An absurd display. So we do expel Italian advisors and then pull our investments from Italy. Yeah. It's alright. In the days of our alliance with Italy, we pursued deep-seated economic and military integration projects to bolster our combined strength against the Germans as a major part of this. Iberia invested heavily into Italy and its colonial empire, ensuring that the fruits of industrialization and progress could be felt across the Middle East and North Africa. Now, however, we stand at odds with our former ally. This is starting the security of our investments as colonial governors or even the Italian government itself could move to nationalize our precious capital. In a bid to strengthen our own hand and show off our diplomatic might, we should pull all of our investments out of the Italian sphere even if it damages local economies and angers big business interests on the ground. Federal tax distribution. The grand debate on taxation has finally come to a ground where <clears throat> precisely the money from where our federal tax would go. There are numerous proposals, including so, uh, corporate subsidies, business sub stimulus, support infrastructure, and military expansion. However, neither party is willing to give up on their own interests. As the fifth day of debate concludes, the only concession they made is a consolidatory, a solitary funding break for increasing the budget for the Moroccan police force. That was a necessary census. How are we doing down here? Ah, the turkey's doing doing very well. Good, good. Very good. It's, everything else gets worse. No more shared intelligence. They purposely counteract the German intelligence capabilities and gain an individual strength. The members of the Triumvirate have pushed uh, to have their intelligence services share information with each other. They have proven to be a very effective policy as all member states greatly profited not just from learning about German activity but also using the techniques the other agencies were using. In the current climate, we cannot have this continue for obvious reasons. Having sensitive data fall into the hands of our new enemies could just be as dangerous now as if the Germans gain access to it. We must remain vigilant in these trying times to protect our national security even from unseen threats. Uh, federal Tax Collection Authority As all things in Iberia, the worst is yet to come. For now, it's a time to debate the Federal Tax Collection Authority. For reasons related to regional autonomy, this issue has been heavily debated and a conclusion was unable to be reached, of course. A conclusion was still not reached. Equal expansion of Spanish and Portuguese tax collection agencies was shot down by Salazar as the change would require cross-regional jurisdiction to be given to tax collectors purchasing regionally taxed goods in other regions. 
A strong federal tax authority was also shut down as it was determined. Uh, did not have enough force backing it up in the case of tax evasion due to this gridlock. The tiny tax collection agency of a bureau remained dysfunctional. The absurd becomes the usual. What kind of already there? Can we do a temp tax hike? It, it barely helped. It cost all that. Oh my god, I spent all that political power for no reason. Oh, my bad. Yeah, that was a waste of time. Oh, I might have to reload the save then for that then. Oh boy. Um, immigrants under watch. During the time of the Troy River Alliance, many immigrants from the member states and other satellites chose to, be, to reside in Iberia. Whether they enjoy the beautiful countryside or take part of the economy, we welcome them with open arms. Following the collapse of the alliance, many returned back to their nations of origins as tensions rose. Some, however, have not taken the step of choosing instead to remain on the peninsula. As much as we have appreciated their contributions to our society, we cannot take their presence lightly or anymore. There can only be two reasons for the continued living in Iberia. Naturalization or spying. Due to it being difficult to distinguish between the reasons on the surface, we must put all these immigrants under watch to test their loyalty. There cannot be any possibility that they can do damage to the military Iberian training state. funding. In general, while the militaries are fairly overfunded, their training sector is extremely weak. Routinely, there's not enough ammo to properly be used uh, in training camps, and shot count limitations have to be imposed on trainees. This issue was brought up between the Cadillos and miraculously passed, almost. An issue with funding for various training camps was biased towards Spanish locations, led to the infamous Portuguese veto being applied and a furious bout of argument in the chamber. Franco Q. Salazar were wanting the Germans to be able to take a beer easily, and nearly had to be restrained physically, as if there wasn't enough tension already. A pillar of femininity. Senorita de Rivera, I'm so glad you could make it. Franco smiled wildly and embraced the woman. Please call me Pilar Cadillo Franco. Pilar Primo de Rivera was undoubtedly the most important woman in Iberia, the younger sister of the late Falange founder Jose Antonio. She built the women's section of the Falange from the ground up, ensuring that it was in the chaos in the Civil War. The children and war widows would be still be fed and given medicine. After the unification, the women's section was subsumed in the UNFET, uh, JONS party. Throughout the 50s, the Rivera, Rivera exerted genuine political influence in a way no other woman could or did in the 1962. In 62, her section operates a variety of services aimed at ensuring the well-being of Iberian women, just as, and just as importantly, ensuring that they were fully indoctrinated into the government ideology. As Iberia's most important woman ate lunch with the Cadillo, they had made small talk relayed what they had been doing in the past few months, but Franco could sense something was seriously bothering his allies. Something wrong, Pilar. You know as well as I do that generally small that the way things are changing these past few years, the feminists seem to grow more numerous by the day, and as much as I try, I fear for the future of our young women, and yet yeah, I do not know what else we can do. Is that why you came to visit? No, 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 not at all. But it does bother me. You would think that they would shut up after we let them into the factories, or at the very least stop demanding we legalize divorce so loud. She rolled her eyes, exhausting. Uh, well, some things never change. Flowers bloom, rivers flow, feminists complain. They both chuckled. No wonder they don't have husbands, they both laughed. Surely you marry one, Franco. They laughed harder. Could you even imagine living like that, Pilar? Come back home. In a similar vein, to many immigrants coming to live in a glorious union, a large number of our own people have also emigrated to the vast lands of the Chamber used to encompass. Now that it has ceased to exist as a political institution, we must move quickly to safeguard the rights and lives of our citizens abroad. We have no information on how the other former alliance members will treat those who are in our eyes, their eyes, could be potential spies. If equally terrible would be their use against us, whether in economic terms or so spread seditious lies. In order to carry out um, their return in a smooth and peaceful manner, we must start a propaganda campaign to reach the expats. If we can convince them of, of the patriotic duty they must fulfill and the material wealth they could accrue by coming back, they may even do so with their own volition. Uh, funding allocation. The state of the Iberian army is objectively awful. That no party can deny, however, when the time comes to potentially resolve that, the consensus breaks down. Today in A Coruña, the negotiations for increased funding to the Iberian army broke down in a spectacular fashion as bickering from military commanders from the Spanish and Portuguese armies floated the stage with papers stating that the funding was far more important. As the Cadillos accepted these claims, it appears that the Iberian army shall once more be sidelined. Hopefully the Germans won't invade it anytime soon. Worries from the paradise, confidential. Uh, about Dominican Republic. Ah, with the collapse of the Troyomber, the main lifeline of the Dominican Republic was severed. Out of the concern for the continued security of the state, and viewing Generalissimo Rafael Trujillo's Jujio's position is vulnerable. A small group of generals within the armed forces plotted a coup d'etat. The plot was quickly discovered by the government intelligence agencies within the last week and was broken up with little difficulty and no known foreign support. This is the first kind of plot in over a decade frequently occurring in the past in Trujillo. I had not consolidated, however. Uh, recent events have increased that threat posed by the plots. Several nations within the region are hostile to the regime. Mexico and Venezuela have antagonized it for a long time, and recent events in Cuba have turned them into a center of anti Trujillo organization, not to mention the active opposition that the U.S. has presented since the end of the war. Trujillo has privately expressed concern over future plots receiving backlash, or receiving back backing from said nations and the chance that they may eventually succeed. It's imperative that Trujillo remains in power. The Dominican Republic is currently our closest ally within Latin America in the efforts of Rafael Trujillo. Play a key part in our strategic interests. With the collapse of the Triumvirate, many view its government's position as isolated, borrowing for our presence. If its regime were to collapse due to outside pressure, the likely replacements will be far less open to collaboration, and extra attention should be focused on the nation. It may be recommended that additional support should be given to the state openly, to prove perceptions of its diplomatic standing for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, dark clouds are gathering over Hispaniola. Day of Portuguese Solidarity. 
The date was not a mistake, clearly placed to overshadow the historic date the Portuguese broke the Spanish control in 1640. The Day of Solidarity is a much more somber occasion meant to remind the people of Portugal and Iberia at large why the Union was born and what it meant to truly be preserving or preserve it. Send it equipment. The Union preserve Portugal. Uh, when the state of the Iberia army out of the way, the time has come to review the military equipment. Since the end of the Second World War, Spain's main weapon providers was Germany and Italy, and with the formation of the Iberian Union, it's clear that Spain cannot keep relying on Germany despite the success of the Bar Program of 43. However, Italy is not in the best position to continue supplying her underclipped army, and many officers from both armies have stated their opinion on the subject, <clears throat> with two clear major, major groups coming out on top in the discussions. One of them advocates for the continuation of Italian weapon imports for as long as they can be relied on, and switching to another major weapons producer if necessary, and another faction advocating for the expansion of the rather small Spanish arms industry, mainly based around small-time workshops rather than fully-blown companies for now, as a Cadillo's analyzer options. It's clear that continuing exports, it's, uh, and continuing imports, it's the simplest and cheapest solution. Let's hope the Italians still have their guns on the cheap. And for our investments. In the uh, days of our alliance with Italy, we pursued deep seated economic and military integration in projects to bolster our combined strength against the Germans. As a major part of Siberia invested heavily in Italy and its colonial empire, ensuring that the fruits of industrialization and progress could be found across the Middle East and North Africa now, however. We stand at odds with a former ally. This is certain the security of our investments as the colonial governors or even the Italian government itself could move to nationalize our precious capital. In a bid to strengthen in our own hand and show off our diplomatic might, we should pull all of our investments out of the Italian sphere, even if it damages local economies and anchors business interests on the ground. Drill sergeant language. With many attempts at standardizing the army drills, a major issue has been brought up to the Cadillos. The many recruits don't speak the same language as squad mates from different regions. This has sparked a debate on whether or not the soldiers could be split into squads from the same region with separate drills and structures with the support of SALs or trying to maintain and reinforce the current system which tries to force bilingualism through down to a squad level which is advocated by Franco after his attempts to unify the culturally diverse Spanish army during the Spanish Civil War. As neither seems to budge on their position, it seems like the status quo will continue. Or at least the drill will be educative, educative for those who only speak one language. La Gran Familia. What would happen if, if in a family which raised 15 children, surely raising that many children, at once would be an enormous financial burden, and even with that hard-working father and his dutiful wife, housewife, La Gran Familia, a film which premiered on December 20th, is about exactly what a family. The film does not exactly have a singular story, it's more like a collection of many short films, each a snapshot in the lives of the family members. Though mainly comedic, these scenes also highlight the tensions of family life, such as the stress that teenagers face preparing for final exams, the immense anxiety characters feel when a toddler goes missing for several hours, or the yearning the children have to own a TV which their families yet to be able to afford. Several commentators have noted the strong national Catholic subjects of the film. The father is a model for the family patriarch. Strict but not cruel, vain, confident but not vain, hardworking and adopt. Catholic. The mother is proud to have birthed so many children and is obedient to her husband and throw in her housework, and instills in her children responsibility and Catholic morals. Sort of a lens of dialogue seem to encourage the viewers themselves to produce their own familias grandes. La Familia Gran, uh, gran Familia has enjoyed the best release of any Iberian Christmas movie in history. Reviews have dubbed it an instant classic, likely to be replayed at theaters for many holiday seasons to come. Films consider moral example and minorities debate. Anti separatist agency. The Iberian Army or um, Union currently forces. Total equality between the two former states, or forming states, Spain and Portugal. This, however, forgets one of the most basic issues that Spain has to deal with since its inception, and that's split between the very different and even opposing cultural groups that form Spain as a country in the first place. Many uh, of those groups, like the Basque or the Galicians, saw Portuguese as a separate entity for centuries. But now that they're all in the same union, and the Portuguese are given special treatment while they're still treated as part of the heavily Castilian dominated Spain, where they feel their desires are not re best represented, rallies and riots against the government have become common throughout the years. This is turning more and more into a large issue as there are many regions that have seceded in the past, with an attempt of the Basque and Catalonia to break off in the 30s, and on those attempts by both Cadillos worried that further separatism may break the Union apart. With a combined effort, they had devised a new institution for Spain, the Accencia Antiseparatista, which will answer directly to them and will deal mostly with discrediting propaganda and direct suppression of separatist movements. Unbelievable, but they agree for a moment and good enough is enough. A good morning is enough. With the collapse of the Triumvirate Alliance, many hawks within the government have gained the impetus to claim that we now need to take an entirely hostile stance with those who have chosen to betray our trust. Yet in reality, our decision cannot be left to such simple emotional responses. Italy and Turkey remain our neighbors in a Europe that is still largely dominated by the Germans. We must maintain some semblance of diplomatic ties with both the Med nations to best suit our national security needs. And road construction is now complete. Following after many incidents and delays, the proposed road in outer Madrid is now usable. This will be the first stepping stone in providing Iberia with a logistical infrastructure system that will bring the half peninsula the capabilities to deflect its eager muscles on the international market. One question remains, however, who will open it and who will be named, be named after? It may not be an easy issue to solve. Oh crap, not this again. 44.6. Keep growing. My god. The interest keeps going up though. Oh, African languages. With uh, the growth of our African possessions after the Second World War, we're now faced with a rather difficult challenge of integrating the region into our mighty country. One of the first and obvious issues is the status of African languages in them. Iberia currently owns the large regions of Kamazait, Shila, Rifian, and Segrochini, Berber Arab sublanguages, which are clearly incompatible with the Latin, Spanish, and Portuguese languages. 
Both Kadiyos argue harshly on this, as both countries have had very different colonial policies in the past in regards to language. Salazar argues that the Union should enforce a language policy of the Portuguese Empire, while forcing Portuguese through all states of public life, stages of public life for the colonies, while Franco argues for the Spanish colonial approach, where natives can keep their languages but can only hold public posts and take part in the local government if they speak Spanish. Both Kadiyos are pushing for the languages. And in the end, the discussion turned so rapid that the final result was a simple but at the same time underwhelming compromise. Both languages will be taught in the region, and the administration will be handled in bilingually in order to encourage it there, but also try to push for both to be used in the private sphere. Two administrative languages? Let's hope this doesn't bite us in the long run. But you know it will. Silent majority, huh? Regions are. Silent majority leans towards Franco. Foreign leaders. Lean towards Franco. Settlers' opinions. Uh, colonial settlers are fully Salazar aligned. It's okay to do that. It's 100% okay to do that. Yeah, we're going to end with Cross of Bond. Most look to strengthening our diplomatic position quickly, lest we become prey to foreign encroachment. One of the places the regime is currently looking to is the Open Alliance, which, despite its center power across the Atlantic, can ensure us a better position in Europe. We may run into a few small problems due to the structurally different political cultures that lie between us and them. Well, however, we do believe that Americans will be prioritizing pragmatism while meeting us with us. For them, this could be a great opportunity to encroach peacefully in Germany's sphere of influence. We just shall hold back high hopes and just seek to establish cultural relations. In the future, we may be able to go much further than this in our foreign legion activity. Uh. In recent weeks, we sent a small contingent of agents uh, to the state of Cuba with the support of the Dominican intelligence. These agents were given the task of counter-espionage in order to discover any potential plots to overthrow Rafael Trujillo's government. Recent findings suggest that the risk of a foreign-backed plot to remove Trujillo's are correct. Through a mixture of intimidation and interception and bribery, agents have managed to partially infiltrate a group of 2,000 soldiers belonging to the Caribbean Legion, receiving training in amphibious landings and drilled in combat. This composed mostly of political dissidents who left the nation in recent years, along with volunteers from Cuba and abroad. There's no reason to doubt that they are preparing for an attack against the Dominican Republic, especially with patterns of recent attacks from insurgent cells targeting several coastal re regions. It's a major deterioration in prospects for the Dominican Republic, and a government similar to that of Cuba would doubtless be hostile to us, not to mention it would jeopardize our interest in the Latin America as a whole. The Dominican government has been properly warned of the threat and is preparing for a major set of war beyond this. The intensity of our efforts to uncover the Legion's plans will likely prevent future advances without putting our agents at heightened, unneeded risks. Several contingency plans have been prepared for an event of this manner and should be ex executed immediately. Let's take a look at these plans and our Latin American friends. We have long and strong cultural ties to all South American nations, with the Portuguese and Spanish Union into Iberia. The current state holds a lot of opportunities in this region at its fingertips. The abandonment of the triumvirate means we can begin, finally, looking beyond our immediate European shores for further alliances. Many visits to the continent will that we brought great classical civilization to all have to be planned. The Latin American countries of like Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, and maybe even Cuba hold great potential for this plan. As secondary powers in their own right, we will be able to forge strong economic and military ties if our diplomacy is successful. Furthermore, dealing with the nations which clearly lie in the open sphere might ingratiate us even more with the Americans. Ah. Moses command power. Conflict and state. Operational strength. Ah. Cuban governments began training the Caribbean Legion. Uh, a group of mercenaries prepared to invade the Dominican Republic and overthrow Trujillo's regime. Whispers have increased resistance in the DR itself. Further, demonstrate that our friends once a firm grip on the controls no longer there. So I said this effort has been orchestrated by the Americans, unfortunately. If we want to maintain any sort of future influence in the Caribbean, we must make sure that Trujillo survives and the Caribbean Legion is crushed. Oh boy. Help the guerrilla groups. Help sabotage the guerrilla groups, but we need guns. Send a telegram to the NMC. I send army engineers. Send fighter aircraft. Deploy troops in. Oh, these troops in case of conflict. That's not bad. Reinforce embassy guards. That might be really good to do. We can do probably several of these. I do want to make sure we got enough guns, though. Oh boy, we need guns, don't we? Um, we all might not be able to do that one. And just see what happens. We might have to use cons commands, but what up? Whatever, you know. Uh, I'm sure, why not? Political power. I don't want to send that because we don't have enough of that. Send telegram. I don't want to spend any political power, but if we have to, we will. But I think for now, we're going to end the episode there. If you enjoyed it, though, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we'll see what else is going to screw up for Iberia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.